uh, even if uh, you know that uh, the concepts and all of that, you need to solve in that particular manner. Other than that, what are the other problems you faced when you gave the previous, like, a previous attempt? So I can tell you the how to solve those problems. Like my my the video question marathon which we have drafted in Pinterest that is as per the curriculum of ACCA the how questions are being asked in the ACCA format it does nothing to do with the C firstly even if you are going to look at the video question marathon in the section C I have mentioned that this particular question has been asked in the past in the ACCA exam itself so everything ever you will be looking over there they are as per the area. Or the way questions are being asked in the ACC. Nothing to do with CACS. And, I uh, saw your question section. See, it's uh, totally uh, matching with the BPP questions or Kaplan. I... Yeah, they are from there only. And uh, you will find majorly the past exam questions. And what we do, we keep on updating all those, the past exam questions. As the new questions come, we keep updating our video question. Method. That's how we work. So it's nothing to do with CACS because, yes, the syllabus is same. But the question, the way they ask the question, that's totally different. Okay. So yeah, one should, student yeah. of yours uh, who studied, uh, she scored really well. I saw her video and she said that she didn't, uh, she only uh, read and practiced from your notes. She didn't even uh, saw the text, study text or exam kit, I guess. So is it your notes are sufficient or we See, have to practice from exam kit? What I suggest to my students, very frankly, First, complete the FINTRA and the study text I have given. Because it's not that I have created myself. I have also taken some inspiration from somewhere and I have drafted that. So majority of like, everything has been covered. But still, if I, a student has a time, I ask student to go and complete the Kaplan exam. Kit. There's no problem in that. Okay. So if you have supposed, because in theory, I don't consider to waste time reading the same concepts again. Okay, so for that, you can, uh, you know, you can just leave that part. But yes, if you have time, if you have completed my video question marathon twice, then you can go and solve Kaplan exam kit or BPP exam kit, whichever you want to solve, solve. I will be really happy if you're going to do that because there's no harm in that. You will be practicing more questions. You will be practicing uh, in a more, you know, in a different varieties of questions. So there's no harm in that, but it's up to the student. Whether they have that much amount of time, some students have time. Abhi, suppose a student is preparing for December. He will be completed, he, she will be completed course by August, September. Then after that, what he's going to do? Of course, he will be practicing more questions. Also, it depends that whether that student has given the FR or whatever paper they are planning earlier also. Suppose they have given as is as, as the your case. So you might having a good idea that, okay, this is the concept, this is the thing. So you might be directly doing the video question math when you complete that. Then after that, what are you going to do? In that particular scenario, I am okay with it that you go and solve BPP, Kaplan, whatever exam kit you want to solve, solve it. There's no issue in that. Okay. So you can go with that. That was her strategy. She opted that, okay, ma'am, I just wanted to focus on this only and I wanted to do this, this only and she scored well there also. So it's not like that I don't restrict my student that, no, I have given this, so, uh, so you will be doing only this much. You cannot do anything else. It's not like that. You are free to solve as many questions as you can. But first, this is what you have to complete. You have to complete my entire study text. You have to complete the video question marathon twice. You have to give the mock paper. After that, whatever you want to do, you can do. You are free from my side. Okay. Ma'am, actually, yesterday, Vishnu sir uh, conducted live session. I also conducted, uh, I also seen that. And yeah. I also asked that, uh, I am just, my concern from for asking the exam kit was that yeah, I am having two subjects and accordingly I have to plan because the time is less. Correct. So that's why I will revise two or three times your notes only. So it will be more good. I mean, uh, that's what I said na, that it is up to the student how much time they can devote. I can tell you that this is the first thing which you have to complete. This is the first thing which you have to complete my study text or Vishnu Sir study text. Then you have to complete our video question marathon. Then you have to give the first one. After that, how much time you have? That is up to you that whether you have sufficient amount of time 
and of course it also depends that the video question marathon which you have done first and twice how much confidence you gain do you feel that whether we have i have to you know again do it for the you know for the confidence building or whatever then my, you might be doing the video question marathon for the th you know third time or it is a possibility that you feel that no uh, the question which are in video question marathon i am done with that i know all the concepts from there and i am okay with that i want to try the new questions in that particular scenario when you you have that confidence that yes i have a complete hold on video question marathon then you are going to switch to the exam kit portion because sometimes students are like that now because they they I, we, I cannot restrict to the student that no you are cannot do that it's yeah. time i can tell you that this is first you have to do before sitting for the exam before like if you haven't done video question method twice you haven't given the mock paper then there's a problem then i completely tell the student that see you haven't done the entire thing this is what you have to do and that's how you have to give the way but see uh, no what happened normally a lot of students feel that acca is very easy okay yes in comparison to ca acca is very easy we are preparing there are a lot of students who might be working in uh, working or who have given ca or something like that but it's not the case you have given the paper you yourself know that how it is it's not easy you have to prepare yourself in each of the concepts case study based question section b question then there is excel also which you have to you know improve where you have to improve your skills so you have to work accordingly but if you have a time then you can go for in your case you are preparing for two paper pm and fm and to be very frankly both of these paper yes you have to give like simultaneously only but they are time consuming paper it's not like that that they are not time consuming paper fr and triple double a still you know you have a little bit idea about them yes like you know the basics of accounts in case of fm and pm what happens student normally don't know have that basics like what is the interest rates what is the management risk and then what is the npv and all of that or the same goes with the pm also and pm also you have a lot of new concepts so over here you have to uh, like a your lot of your time will be consumed in the understanding of concepts so that you have to understand and, and again that's not like first you complete this much then you can again you know interact with me that ma'am i have done this much now what have to do so it's a step by step process it's not like when we are going to meet only once once you complete this much then we you can again interact with me ma'am i have done this much now what to do what i should do now so then i will guide you that uh, okay the year this much you have completed you have given your mock after reviewing your mock what is your performance i will guide you that do this thing also okay so that's what you have to do any other problems you are facing you can ask that also no no ma'am you can uh, just give me the, the whole view now i am okay with okay you. okay yeah so if i talk about the syllabus area so in syllabus area the section a this is entirely your theoretical part over here we will be discussing what is the purpose and nature of financial management basically the basic introduction then how it is related with the corporate strategy and the financial objectives who are the stakeholders then you know how financial objectives are being assessed in the non profit organization so that's your first section then in section b it's again the section b is also a little bit theoretical i would say it's a financial management environment over here we will be talking about the microeconomics the macroeconomics the secondary market the commercial market the money market the institutions the underwriting and all of that we are going to discuss over in these two sections so section a and section b is going to create a base that's going to introduce your cu from the financial management then you have the last one next one that is the working capital management over here we will be understanding that what is the concept of working capital where working capital is required then how you are going to and what are the elements of working capital so the elements of working capital are inventories account receivables account payables so how these different different elements of working capital need to be managed and why it is a requirement for an organization to manage these elements the entire inventory management is required why accounts receivable management is required why accounts payable management is required we will be also discussing the funding the funding strategies and what is the working capital needs this particular portion working capital management is very important from the exam point of view because in section e you will be having question like you can get question from working capital management so this is actually a very important element over here 
also in section b also questions can come from here section a also so this is the area so like this the c part is something from where a questions can come in section a b c everywhere and the most importantly in section c a direct 20 marker questions can come from working capital management same is the case with the investment appraisal investment appraisal over here we are going to talk about the long term like what is the capital uh, budgeting what is the capital expenditure what are the techniques by which we assess these uh, projects so we will be talking about the NPV, the IRR, the discounted payback method, we will be talking about the ARR and then we will be talking about also how inflation and taxation need to be adjusted for calculation of NPV and then there might be some questions related to lease or buy, asset replacement and capital rationing. Again, this area, like the section D area from the syllabus area is very, very important because quotient can directly come from this area in section C, that is the 20 marks quotient. So this area is also very important from the exam perspective. Then we have business finance. This particular area is a mix of practical and theory. Like this particular one, sources of finance, as I talk about, Sources of finance and business finance, this is a theoretical one. Then estimating the cost of capital, that is a practical one. And this one is an important part. Sources of finance and their relative cost. Over here, we will be talking about how to calculate cost of equity, cost of debt, how to calculate cost of preferences, irredeemable, convertible loan notes, all of that. So in this also, this is total mixture of theory and practical, this, this calculation part, how to calculate cost of equity, cost of uh, preferences. This is all your uh, practical, like the practical portion and sources of finance is your theoretical portion. Then capital structure, again, a practical part and finance for small and medium sized entities. This is your, uh, again, a theoretical part. Then business valuation over here, we will be having the chapters of valuation of debt and the financial assets. We will be having models for valuation of shares, which is again, a practical one. The EMH theory and how it's going to be considered practically. That is also we are going to talk about in this particular area. So this particular area, again, as I'm saying that again of good weightage and you require to focus over here. Then we have the last part that is the risk ma management over here. We will be talking about the foreign currency risk, the interest risk and how the exchange rate difference and interest rate fluctuation impacts then we have the employability and technological skill over here. Basically, they want you to understand that how you are going to work on the Excel and the Microsoft Word and present the information. Then if I'm going to talk about the exam structure. So over here, your exam is of three, uh, like three hours. And in section A, if I talk about, you have 15 objective portions of two marks each. Then you have in section B, you will be having three case studies and each case study of you know, 10 marks each. And in section C, you will be having over here two case studies of 20 marks each, to making the total question number one and question number two of 20 marks each, making the total of uh, 40 for the section C. So your section C is of 40 marks. Section B, if I talk about, is of 30 marks. And section A over here is again of 30 marks. But in section A, you will be having objective <clears throat> type questions, wherein in section B, it's a mix of a like a, it's a objective type case study based question. Like in one question, you will be have given five questions and you have to solve those five questions. Each question will be of two marks each. And in section C, it's a long case study, 20 marks each. So this is the exam structure of financial management exam, okay? And over here in section A, it's majorly the theory which is going to come. Majorly the theory, but the concept-based theory. Concept-based theory. And in section A, questions can come from any area. Syllabus area A, B, C, D, E, F, any area question can come from section set A. In section B, again, questions can come 
from entire syllabus. It's not like that this particular area we are going to ask or not. No, everything can come from anywhere. Section C has a limitation. Over here, questions are going to be asked majorly from the working capital, from the investment appraisal, and uh, from your this thing, um, risk management. Majorly, questions are being asked risk management or cost of capital. There, from there, questions are being asked in section C. So over here, it's not like that questions can come from anywhere, but yes, you need to have a complete idea that in what way questions will be done and how to solve those questions. So that's the basic structure of the financial management exam. How I always suggest my student that first you go with section A, first solve section A, then you lend with section B and then section C. The sequence in which you will like paper is being given to you in that particular sequence you are going to solve the paper a b c don't break the sequence but sometimes students believe that they can go with section c and then a and then b that then it's up to their student but i personally suggest a and then b and then c the reason being that uh, in section a normally questions are easy so if you get the good marks over there, you get a confidence that, okay, I am able to solve this paper. If you're directly lent on section C and suppose you're stuck in some portion, you will feel very underconfident and you will not get that energy that, okay, I'm not, I'm able to solve this question. So that's why I asked my student to go with section A or B, whichever they want to go first, because over there, questions are a little easy, a little small also. So they are not going to stuck. And even if suppose in section A, they stuck with one question, they have options to go you know they can switch to next question then next question and out of 15 question i suppose the student will be able to solve at least 10 questions so there you will be gaining a confidence that okay i'm able to solve this thing then you go on section b then you get more confidence and then finally you land on section c because otherwise what's going to happen if you directly land on section c then your confidence in the exam may you know hamper and you are like okay i'm not able to solve this long question i have wasted 20 minutes and i'm left with only uh, you know two hours or two uh, you know 2.5 hours that is going to you know create a mess in the exams also because preparation is one thing and giving the paper how you are planning your paper that is another thing a lot of students they are very good in the exam like they prepare very well but still they are not able to crack the paper because they do a lot of mess in the exam so that is also you need to avoid okay so this is about the financial management exam structure, the syllabus area. If you have any query over here regarding the anything like regarding the exam structure or regarding the syllabus area, syllabus area, I have told you already that how you have to start. I normally suggest my student to start with, just a second, start with working capital management. Then you can proceed with investment appraisal. Then you can proceed with business valuation, then risk management, and then you can do with this thing, the business finance. And lastly, the section A and B, because section A and B are majorly theory. So I not don't suggest my student that you start with the theory. You start with working capital management. It's a practical portion you will enjoy. You start liking the concepts. And once you, once you start liking the subject now, subject automatically become easy for you. And once, if you are not start liking the subject, then there's a problem. You will feel that I am not able to do that subject. So that's why First, build your interest. And for that thing, you should start always with the working capital management because it's easy also and interesting also. Okay. Now, the way anything you want to ask me or you want to add on over here, then I can take up that also. Okay. <clears throat> no, ma'am, everything is clear. Everything clear. So, uh, before concluding this particular webinar, let me give you some main, main points which we have discussed. First, you have to work on the Excel skill. Each and every student has to work in the Excel, on the Excel skills because that's very, very important. Each and every portion of section B and section C, whenever you are solving, you will be solving on Excel, not on pen paper format. When you are doing section C question, make a summary note. First, make a summary note. And then from those summary notes, try to solve the question because that's how you're going to save time. Don't repeat the mistake of like reading the question again and again because that is going to create confusion and wastage of time. Thirdly, when I talk about theory of financial management, theory of financial management is not direct 
theory it's not like cramming thing you have to understand the question because when you are going to see section a questions in section a questions of my video question marathon i have you know covered good amount of questions of theory so over there you will find that most of the questions are concept based questions if you know your concept you will easily solve those questions if you don't know your concept you will stuck so whenever student asks me ma'am how to handle financial management theory you don't need to cram anything you just need to understand the concept concept of each and every chapter for that read my study text if you want to read read the kaplan study text whatever you want to read but read it fourthly i also suggest my student that when you are reading the study text whether the fintram study text my study text or any study text in general make your short notes also it's not it's always going to help you because i personally believe when you write the things you are able to memorize them so make your short short notes i have i have provided the notes but still make your own notes also learn the formula in the exams formula will be given to you but that is again wastage of time if you are going to look the formula and all of that that's going to you know you are wasting your time so you have to be very good with your formula you need to know each and every formula each and every formula should be on your tips make a separate formula book regarding that we have talked about in the sessions also in the video question marathon how to make the you know formula book but make a formula book where you write all your formulas and just revise every day so that at the end of the you know when you complete all your study like uh, video portions and everything you are okay with this thing that yes i know each and every formula because yes in fm you will get good amount of formulas fourthly uh, regarding the chapters i have told you in section c the questions are majorly asked from working capital management investment appraisal business valuation and risk management so these chapter you cannot afford to you know leave any of these chapter these chapter you have to complete and when i say complete each and every concept from these chapter need to be very very good you are you have to be very good on on these chapters because you will be getting direct like 20 20 40 marks paper from these chapters regarding the other chapter that does not mean that dusham ma'am is saying that leave other chapter no don't leave don't leave anything first this thing you need to understand don't leave anything whether it's practical or theory and in the exam also don't leave anything because there's no negative marking so why to leave anything if you have time just try to attempt as much possible like uh, you know as much as you can try to attempt each and everything that's the last thing which i would say yeah and what what about cost of capital in big question cost of capital i've told you know the this thing when we were discussing about uh, the business finance that cost of capital and sources of finance and their relative cost this is the practical portion over here you have to focus other like in the e syllabus area other things are theoretical so you will understand when you are going to read it you will understand but in this area cost of capital and uh, calculation of relative cost and capital structure part that is a practical that on that you have to work okay so <clears throat> that's basically major tips and tricks which i wanted to give you at this level we will be again meeting and uh, at that point in time depending upon your performance and everything i will again guiding you and helping you that okay from now onwards this is how you have to plan so i hope that you understand that what should be your plan for the next 2 3 months and again in these 2 3 months we will be meeting again and at that point of time whatever your performance i will be guiding you accordingly so that's all i wanted to cover thank you for joining the webinar and the session i hope this webinar is very helpful for you divya and the other students okay guys okay bye okay bye <laughs> Thank you.